Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Flavia de la Fuente, and I am your student commencement speaker this year. I thought a little bit about what I wanted to say before I began, and my parents told me that when I went to college, I was going to meet a really nice guy, and I guess this is my last chance, so my number is 949. <laughs> Seriously, though, after the ceremony. Uh, quick shout outs. Uh, it's really hard to get parking. The McClellan clan helped me get a parking pass because I was really late with that. I want to thank my floor from first year, Five North. Uh, Levering Heights, apartment 26, never do chat roulette by yourself. Uh, Mighty Mike, because strong, beautiful women will change the world. Liz Cartwright's LSAT class, because now we know too much about her pets. Uh, Professor Tong's political violence class. We took a class picture last Wednesday. It's really cool. Uh, Sade Spence, Miss Southern California 2010. Uh, anybody who was in the stadium in 2006 when we beat USC at football? Have you heard? They cheat. And finally, the latest and greatest, the class of 2010. Shout out to all of you. So, today I would like to offer everybody here not wisdom nor answers. I don't pretend to have it either. It's actually Gustavo's job. He'll be great. Uh, I'd like to present a motto, one that is distinctly made here at UCLA. It's UCLA's best message. It's on our website. And my notes are watching. <laughs> Yeah, this is not memorized. <laughs> I'm a star, I know. So, it's UCLA's best message. It's on our website, on posters, on our agendas and notebooks. Nobody at UCLA keeps score on who you are. They just want to see what you can do. UCLA asks us to be leaders from the moment we step on campus. We've been working on changing the world since we got here, and probably even before. After all, there are over 800 student groups on this campus that address issues ranging from pediatric AIDS to homelessness in Westwood. And there are students who are already leaders in their field in medicine, science, development, politics, and obviously athletics. So while other universities may tell their students, now's the time to go change the world, we've been ready. We've been doing it. UCLA wants to see what we can do, what challenges we take on, what problems we solve. We don't stop to wait and see who else will take care of it. Waiting to do something only teaches us to wait. So to learn how to act, we got to act. And to act, we must be creative. We have to take guesses, throw out left field ideas, because our acquired, accumulated knowledge, the things we already know, it's going to get dusty and it's not going to take us so far as really questioning authority. That will make us creative. So I'd like to tell you about an artist, but he didn't paint and he didn't play an instrument. This artist created a different way of looking at something that is held for hundreds of years. Classically, we measure speed by measuring distance over time. But when measuring the speed of light, this principle doesn't hold, and this artist proposed that maybe light is a mixture of time and distance. It was new, it was different, it was creative, his name was Albert Einstein, and he was an artist. Creativity is not just a thing you do, it's a way of seeing the world. But overhauling the laws of physics wasn't an easy thing to do. Disrupting the order, saying everything that he knew wasn't quite right, it was courageous. To truly be artists, you can't be afraid. So let me tell you about another one, and this one actually worked in a studio. He painted a painting, the most important painting of the century, and it was mocked, rejected, and hated. He dared to depict women in a way that made people uncomfortable, raw, menacing, almost brutal. The painting was the ladies of Avignon, this was Picasso, and because it was a radical departure from traditional European painting, it was a revolutionary act, one that upset a lot of people, including his friends, his colleagues, and his society at large. What did he feel as he painted it? What did he feel as he presented it, knowing it was going to be hated, despised, and ridiculed? 
It probably wasn't a great feeling, but he had a vision, he had to act on it, and he wasn't afraid to do so. If we are really going to be artists, we have to do things differently, but some things always stay the same. We have to be compassionate. Forty years ago, a UCLA junior who walked Bruin Walk, went to classes in Bunch, enjoyed the lawn by Jan Steps, was driven by his compassion for other Americans to pass on an opportunity to shine in something he loved the most, basketball. In 1968, American civil rights activists began organizing a boycott of the Summer Olympics in Mexico City, and Lou Alcindor, player of the year and star of UCLA's NCAA champion basketball team, decided that he would not be participating in the Summer Olympics. Today, we know him as Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, UCLA legend. He sidestepped what he was supposed to do and decided to do something differently. Maybe he learned it from his coach, John Wooden, who once refused an invitation to a national tournament because it had a policy of banning African-American players. Both coach and Kareem acted. They took a stand, they did it creatively, courageously, compassionately in the UCLA way. And in that spirit, I'd like to make a small contribution to that tradition. For a lot of graduates here today at UCLA and at universities across the country, today is bittersweet. It is sweet because they have made it and bitter because it is the end. They can go no further. Whether they are economists or ecologists, engineers or English majors, they can't use their degrees. After years and years of hard work, of working too many minimum wage jobs, after dropping out and coming back, after taking quarters off, after being told that no, you can't, or no, you're not supposed to go to college, they will graduate like the rest of us, take their diplomas, go home, and wait. They are immigrants. Some people say illegal, I choose to say undocumented. They arrived as children to this country, some when they were six, some when they were two, some before they could walk. They grew up here with us, all of us, together. And many, against incredible odds, go to college and finish. This university, UCLA, with no financial aid. They walk, brew, and walk, go to football games, go to lab, go to section, study, and they're here with us today. Nancy, Will, we'll hang out later tonight. Their parents are also sitting in the audience. These Bruins will receive their degrees, but they can't use them. But we, as a community, as a Bruin family, have responded to this moral crisis. Our chancellor, our administration, our faculty, our student body have been the nation's leaders in responding to this crisis. We take action. We have fought passionately for the DREAM Act, which would provide a path to citizenship for undocumented youth who attend college. We know nobody's dreams should be denied. When we consult our God, our deepest convictions, we know it's never acceptable to deny anybody the essence of their humanity, their dreams. And as we learned in the civil rights era, the dream deferred is a dream denied. We don't just wait to be creative, courageous, or compassionate. We just do it. And this is one of many challenges we face. And as it is so personal to us as a university community, I wanted to highlight how it reflects how we come together to make real change. But real change doesn't happen overnight. And it's not easy. And it's not glamorous. If you believe your cause, your product, your solution, your idea is right or just or true, as Gandhi said, first they ignore you then they laugh at you, then they fight you, but then you'll win. And it takes courage to be ignored, laughed at, and attacked. And it takes courage to put up with all of that for more than one day. There's a Native American proverb that asks, how does an ant eat a buffalo? And the answer is one bite at a time. So how will we take on our challenges? One day at a time. How will we be making a difference? One day at a time and we will be compassionate, courageous, and creative one day at a time. Nobody can tell you which challenge you should tackle, but we can all be artists, thanks to UCLA and the way we take on our challenges. Good luck. Thank you so much for listening from the bottom of my heart, and let's hope that somehow, some way, all of our work intersects. Congratulations.